Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to Dr. OJ and Tolu. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking up at you today. I know. I'm a little bit shorter today. I'm my actual height today, y'all. Look at that. Look, 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 look. <laughs> All right, guys. It's the month of October, and we're just kind of taking some time to toast for the month of October, especially because this marks one year, like really one year of consistent content from Dr. OJ Speaks. Awesome. Can you believe that? Cheers to that. Cheers to that, y'all. <laughs> yes. But guess what? As we're celebrating one year, we started this brand new program with this phenomenal, wonderful young man right here, the species of human being, Mr. Tolu. And I, I, I see, look, look, let me tell you something. Okay, don't worry. We're not going to So this episode is very serious. So let's get back on track, y'all. Yes, let's get to it. All right, Tolu, so today we're talking about men. Yes, and abuse and how they take it and how sometimes they just don't know who to talk about, uh, talk to about yes. it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Tolu is going to be sharing a lot of insight as a man, of course, and we're going to be really finding a way to express solutions. I mean, I don't even know what the solution would be, mm -hmm. but at least we're going to be able to lend our voices to bring some light, not shed light, mm -hmm. but to shine a very bright light. Course. on an issue that really exists and it's killing and robbing society of amazing phenomenal men because Absolutely. when a man is abused he can be the best father he can be the best husband he can't even be productive in the yeah. marketplace can't ask his potential at potential. all no mm -hmm. how no how if he has that potential he will die inside yeah. of him so we're talking about men and abuse today don't forget as we're here subscribe to our channel turn your notifications on come on guys <laughs> comment on this video Share some of the experiences that you might have had with men dealing with abuse, if that's the case. And of course, don't forget to share this video with your community as well. Help us grow our community as we help bring amazing content to you every single week on yeah. Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Dr. OJ and Tolu coming to you live. We will be back with our discussion. Right See you soon, guys. Amazing, amazing, 
amazing individual, super, super I appreciate grateful. That. Uh, Thank and you. I appreciate the lovely, lovely princess of the show for oh, having her. Oh, I've never been called princess before, <laughs> except by my mom. Anyways, your mom, you're like, that's my princess. She's still, I'm a 40 year old princess. She still calls me Absolutely. princess. Absolutely. She introduces me. She's like, that's my princess. I'm like, no, I'm 40. We never grow up in your eyes. We never do. <laughs> so it's a great honor to be part of it. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for loving us and thank you for the support. So as we continue our journey in October to raise awareness for domestic violence, today we're focusing on the men. Yeah. So Tolu is really going to be taking the lead on this one because Absolutely. this is about our men. I of love course. our men and it's unfortunate that we don't recognize how much domestic violence impacts our men. Absolutely. I think we should start the conversation from our boys because it's boys to men. Of course. Of course, absolutely. And, and where I would like to start from basically is the how um, men are raised. Mm -hmm. You know, we're raised in a certain, especially if you're black, African, um, you're raised in a certain way where you have to take a lot of things. You know, men have to swallow, men have to overlook. And even when they're kids, they're like, well, that's your sister, you don't, you don't. Don't you know. beat her back. Exactly, you know, you have to take things. Even though, of course, it's a good way to train boys to respect yes. women, because I am 100% for uh, men respecting women, Definitely. taking care of them. I mean, it's a topic you're very passionate about. Absolutely. Speak openly and yeah. elaboratively about Of course, it, so. of course. So, you know, from that upbringing, that begins to put you in a place psychology, um, psychologically, oh my god, <laughs> where you... Psychologically, psychology, you know, don't worry, no matter the circumstances, we are we there, you know, circumstances, <laughs> you're crazy, it's okay. you just reminded me of something really funny, but anyways, you know, you're trained in such a way where you have to suppress how you feel, yes. because you're the male feeder, mm -hmm. you know, so it's kind of like, take it, don't say a thing, don't complain, be a man, you know, yes. everybody says be a man. And what that does that is... What does that even mean though? Exactly, because men have emotions too. Yes. You know, it's not like we're created with some kind of superpower. <laughs> I used to <laughs> think so. I used to, I'm like, okay, why are you yeah. not expressing your exactly. emotions? Exactly, it's like... because of the conditioning. Society yes. expects a man not to complain, oh. not to say how they feel. You know, when a man becomes too emotional or to uh, express it about how they feel. They're like, no, you're not a man. You know, you're just, you're just, you're just a, you're a sissy, you're not a man, you know? And so men, because we want to avoid that rejection, especially from the females. Mm -hmm. Because now females have a standard, like if, if he's always talking about his feelings, and he's always in his feelings, he's not a man yet, he's not grown. Honestly, I don't think so though, yeah. right? Because, I guess maybe it's because I'm an Aquarius and because yeah. I have, I already have this overpowering personality. Yeah. I honestly appreciate a man that can get in his feelings and stay there for a bit. That's why you guys are overpowered. Get it? <laughs> That's what they do. That's what they do. I'm That's telling you. Okay. I walked right into that one. I walked right into that one. Back to the top. <laughs> yeah, never mind. But yeah, I understand what you mean, you know, but you know, a lot is expected from you know, too much, you know, yeah. it's because you're worried about, um, internally there's a battle going on because you're trying to be the best you want to be uh -huh. for the female gender, yes. even if it's just your sister, you know, I'm not even talking about in terms of relationship, you want to be strong, you want to be there, you know, they, they hit you, you can't cry in public, mm -hmm. so what men do basically is when they feel the pain, they wait till they're alone and then they cry by themselves. Really? Cry by themselves? Of course, men cry. In case you, females, in case you don't know, men cry by themselves. And what happens in that What does that look like? Because it's, it's just, terrible. It, it paints a picture yeah. of powerlessness. Exactly, it's terrible because in that moment, you're crying, but there's no one there to comfort you and say yes. it's okay. Like, don't worry, everything's fine. So what they do is they release these emotions in isolation. So, and then they come back and they're strong again. Mm. Hercules, Hercules, but, <laughs> you know, but inside there's an internal, you know, death that's mm. happening gradually. So that's why some men lose it and eventually explode. Mm. Because they pile all of these emotions up and they never express it. Now, as regards uh, domestic violence, what can happen in that situation, especially when you meet a situation where an alpha female is matched with, you know, let me, let me re re 
rephrase my st my statement, an alpha controlling female. Ooh, because, exactly. Because look, alpha <laughs> exactly. Females wanna, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So it's an alpha controlling female matched with a very um, emotional guy, but that suppresses his emotion. Mm. So little things like you know, hey, you know, you start to feel like you're not the man in the relationship because she's taking charge. She's telling you what to do, and you know, like I slightly mentioned in our last. Uh, um, uh, show yes. where society forces you not to say anything. So in public you're wearing a smile, mm -hmm. but you go back home and you're dying. And what happens is some men uh, tend to stay after work just doing nothing just because just they're thinking, point. how do I go back home? Because ah. the moment I step through the door, it's like, well, um, what is it that you're doing wrong this time? What kind of life is that though? Like, because yeah. I feel like society really <laughs> does not help the situation for yeah. men. Mm -hmm. The media does not help the situation for men. And I feel like, what can we do? Because, you know, the Honey Jobs Foundation started this cause about three years ago when we started doing the fashion show. Yeah. And we do it on uh, men against abuse. Mm -hmm. So it was really more bringing out more men positively to say their role models, their fathers, their, their, their men who are in so many different professions. We have models, we have teachers, we have um, fire firefighters, we have law enforcement. Just different men just participating in the show yeah. just to say, look, men are against abuse, but they're also so many amazing men out that there so mm -hmm. it's it's sad because they and then after we launched the first year mm -hmm. i started getting a lot of inboxes from guys saying hey i'd like to talk to you about my story and of i'm course. like really of it course. took you this long in fact i had a guy who wanted to have a private conversation but he didn't want to come on camera of course they don't want to be known i'm like first of all he was in the military yeah. and i felt like his position and his stance as a military official and the fact that he was a man who was like just talking about his experience mm -hmm. and how he had overcome the situation would have been so empowering to a lot of, to a lot mm -hmm. of young boys. Yeah. You know, but he just felt like, ah, oh, doctor, I'm not ready for that. I don't want yeah. to put myself out there. And I guess another thing that played into it is the fact that he was in the military. Exactly. He felt like there was going to be a huge backlash for him. Of course, of course. Of course, they, and you know, you typically fathers, we don't know the extent to which discipline, you know, goes with male ch children. You know, it's like they can't do right in your eyes. You know, so they get beat every single time they try. So what happens in a relationship later on when they're older is um, basically they try to impress this woman, and it's just not enough. So they keep like I can't do well enough. So they just keep being suppressed. You know, want to deal with with men because you just don't want to feel like you're not masculine enough. I'm so sorry for our men, but guys, we're going to be right back and we're going to pick up this conversation because I know Tolu still has a lot of insight because I really want you to yeah. help us with some solutions today. Help of some course. men, help free some men. A lot of men going through this. We really want to make this a way to just tell you that you're not alone no. and there's help available. We'll be right back, guys. Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Oinka Salajinaru, the president and founder of the Honey Drops Foundation. I am so excited to welcome you back guys to the month of October. As you all know or may not know, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Throughout 2020 and 2021, due to the pandemic, we had to take a hiatus to really focus and re-strategize on how we can be most impactful as a 501c3 nonprofit in the community. And we have done an amazing work rebuilding all of our platforms, especially our website, to allow you to easily donate register to volunteer and be part of all of our programs but most importantly i am super excited to announce to you guys that we are getting ready for a bigger and better 2022 so stay tuned make sure you go to our website honeydropsfoundation.org to donate because 2022 we are coming back bigger better and stronger to help provide education to elevate and empower youth and families to live beyond domestic violence and teen dating violence Welcome to October, guys. Welcome back, guys, to Dr. OJ and Tolu. We're still here in the studio talking about men and domestic violence, just really highlighting the impact that this one, this horrible thing, how it affects our men. 
You know, a lot of times we want to focus on the female gender, we want to focus on the kids, but we forget that there is a flip side to this. And that flip side, in most cases, is even more deadly. You know, they say hell hath no fury. <laughs> I think when men suffer abuse, their own is just really, really extra. Really, really of extra. Course. And I wonder why, though. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just, you know, the passive aggressiveness. It, it, it becomes a a situation where he's not happy mm -hmm. and that's the reason why typically 90% of the time the woman now experiences cheating you know and 90% and of the time it's emotion, emotional cheating because she, he can't talk to you so another woman is more someone else exactly to lean, to lean on because she's like man I feel your pain you why shouldn't we treat oh, you like that you know that kind of thing so it becomes emotional cheating eventually to physical cheating mm -hmm. um, but I think that it starts from subtle things like, you know, um, you don't even know how to look good, you know. My dad dresses better than you. Or little things like that. Or um, you can't you do can't you do something else with your life? You know, I mean the job doesn't bring enough money, you know, like you know, you talk to the man as if his effort is just not enough. Mm -hmm. So he begins to feel like he's not enough. You know, and then when that uh, becomes more empowering, because your your victimizer grows with time, from verbal to mm. physical, like yes. you know, like um, especially if he's struggling in his life, you know, he's in a point in his he's life where he's trying to yet. exactly he's trying to provide and it's hard, he's not getting a job or whatever whatever reason it is, you know, and maybe she's more empowered, she has more money. You know, typically it's like that, or she, she looks more beautiful. You're like, you know, I did you a favor of marrying you, right? Ooh, exactly. The little things like that, they attack the man from inside. Mm -hmm. So when he gets a slap, he doesn't know what to say. He's like, well, I know that I'm not even as handsome, you know, compared to, you know, how beautiful she because is. Because she's already broken him down. Exactly. Too. You know, so he, 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 if he was going to say something, it becomes worse because it's like, you know, I don't match up to this woman. I better keep my mouth shut before I do something good. Uh, exactly. So typically, it eats into that. So when you meet a man and you like, why are you taking this? Why don't you just say leave. something? Or exactly, or just leave. Yeah. Like, this is all I know. You know, uh, she is stronger than me. She is more. She's a woman. And you yeah. remember, I, I told you that society favors the woman because of yes. I love you women, but y'all play victim all too well. Too much. <laughs> too well. Why now? Why would you come at us like that? No, I love you guys. Because we're, we're here to protect you. Okay. Right? Because, of course, there are good women out there, respectful yes. women, understanding, God-fearing. Women that, when you're not there, they're praying for you and making sure everything is good for you. Yes. Yeah, so I respect that. But a lot of other women just like to be victims because there's something I said in one of my videos. I was like, are you the type of person that takes accountability for the things you do? Uh -huh. Or are you the type of person that it's easy for you to shift blame when there's yes. a problem? You know, he made you, me do it. He, <laughs> just, exactly. he, 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 he just exactly. wasn't paying attention. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And if you talk to the women that act like that, they're like, well, he, he, he's no good. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything in the house. He doesn't do anything for himself. I mean, he doesn't even know how to yeah, dress. find a hundred reasons to justify that behavior. But my question is, why did you marry him in the first what place? Is... If you were going to make him endure abuse, then what's the purpose of making that man... And if you feel him? like he's not good enough, yeah. like, I'm sorry to say, but you always have a choice at any point in time Absolutely. to change direction. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying I'm advocating for marriages to break back no. and forth, but the reality of the matter is, I think a lot of us in this generation, the past 30, 40 years, we have a wrong notion of what marriage yeah. is. I can say that and own that part for myself that I was very unaware when I first decided to get married. I was ill-equipped for what that really was. And the decision just came like fly by night. And, oh yeah, he wants to get married. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm 27. Oh yeah, I should be married at this time. Okay, yeah, so of that course. we can have this. That, you know, those types of, that type of thinking got me where I am today, but today I am, I guess, better off. I have learned a lot of lessons from my mistakes, uh -huh. so I can own my crap. Let me just say that. I can own my crap and tell you, look, I missed the ball because of these reasons, and exactly. I can own the part where I made the wrong choice. Uh -huh. But the fact is, 
men in a situation or you've been in a situation with a guy and you find yourself resenting because it's a lot of resentment that leads to of course. you portraying that kind of behavior mm-hmm. on someone. And you know, it's a thing of power too. You, you, do, you would wonder why power? someone... Power? Yeah. You would wonder why a woman that is, you know, of course she clearly thinks there are too many things wrong with this guy, mm-hmm. but she stays in the marriage exactly. to abuse the, the guy. It's a thing of power because not every man is wired to take it. The percentage of men that take that type of abuse is in the minority. Yes, so when that's true. women like that find men like that, they stay there because it works for that power tussle happening inside of them. Mm. Because not every man will take that. Of course. There's some men that if you tell them, oh, you're no good, you don't know how to dress, they'll tell them then, uh, really? why did you marry me? <laughs> of course, obviously there's something good about me uh-huh. that you married me, so yeah. you can. that's the door, you can take it. You know, a lot of men won't take being spoken to that way. But the type of men that take it, like I went back to the childhood, mm-hmm. is because of that underlying trauma that led them to be a certain kind of way. So they're easy prey. So how do we help our, because for me, I feel yeah. like the cycle of abuse yeah. will continue to repeat itself from one generation to the next. Yes. If a particular generation does not take the proactive step to break that cycle, Because sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we act a certain way because nature versus nurture has programmed us to be that way. How can we help our young boys to really see a better way to be? Especially since the environment does very little to make that better for them. Of course. Of course. I think it started from the grassroots. Um, You know, there has to be a reconditioning in schools, Mm -hmm. most especially about how men are portrayed. Yes. There's, there's a comedian that said, I think it was Chris Rock, he was, saying, he was saying that if you watch the news, there's always some girl who saying, oh, how can we find Sharon? Has anybody seen Sharon? You know, but when a man is missing, they're like, I hope that, <laughs> I hope that thing never comes back. You know, so, so it's kind of like, yeah, so from the media, there's already yes. a conditioning yes. about Caring a lot about, about women yeah. and it's true though, you're right because when you see all those missing children's yeah. report, I know a lot of young boys yeah. get missing, but it's very rare that you that see you reported cases of boys getting exactly. missing. It's a female child. So if there's oh, there's okay. a more there's a more uh, I don't want to call it I'll just call it what it is. There's a bias towards the fem- female gender. Yeah. You know, so, but, you know, men do get uh, abused as well. So, uh, conditioning right from our elementary phases in mm-hmm. school, um, the media is doing a lot of terrible things to, to the portrayal of a man, you know, a lot of things. Because, um, and I hate to say it, but as much as there are men killers, there are female killers as well. Yes. There are men in prisons. And women from prison. But you see what happens in the shows that you watch on it's TV. It's, it's a lot of, you know, it's either uh, serial killers that are men. You know, they, there has to be a different way that men are portrayed in the media mm-hmm. to make help women. And what you are doing is something I have to commend because there are few women that are actually saying, hey, men get abused too. Men get hurt too. Men cry too. Yes. Yes. Men cry a lot too. They are emotional, and and it's just it's sad because even in sitcoms, they're like uh, the emotional one, the the one you know with the the outcast, the one that doesn't belong, that doesn't yes. play sports. Yes. You know? Yes. So then there, there has to be a conditioning that has to change in the media and in schools. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like parents have a role to play in this and empowering. Exactly. I think. You know, when we when females are talking about feminism, gender equality and all of that good yeah. stuff, I think we have pushed it to the point where gender equality is no longer equal. Or is it the fact that humans <laughs> no, maybe it's just the fact that humans are not able to find the balance. Exactly. Because now it's gender equality, women's right, this, this, this. But it's now tilting so far to the right yeah. where it's now all of a sudden very, very it's not balanced. Yeah. And I feel like we should do better. Like we have to figure out a way to make sure that both sides are hurt. Of course. You know, women cry, men cry, women get hurt, men get hurt. We begin to see ourselves as purely humans and not based on our, ge- on. our gender. Just we're just human beings. That's it. I feel like that should be a new conversation starter. Like all humans are equal, period. Yeah. Just see yourself as a, 
as a human being, like he's a human, I'm a human. Exactly. We both deserve to get paid more money. Mm -hmm. We both deserve to be heard. We both deserve exactly. to be heard and to be taken care of. of I feel like until we get to that point, then it's always going to be this excessive bias of oh women's right women's right women's right and then men are like okay so where do we fall where do we fall how do we end patriarchy oh yeah patriarchy it is it is, it is. all of that conversation honestly i know a lot of you men are tired of talking men That's, are tired of talking they are they are so they talk amongst themselves is that why yeah. um fewer men are getting married these days of is course. that a reason absolutely because they feel like the, and I, I'm sorry to say this because I understand what it means to be female. I know it's not easy. I understand mm -hmm. what it means to be abused. It's not easy as well yes. being a female. So I get it, right? Mm -hmm. But the feminist movement has become so powerful that men are like, it's becoming powerful and toxic. So women are growing up with preset mindsets yes. about men. Like, I've heard people say, all oh, men ain't bleed, you know? All men, they generalize. I hate the fact, I, you know? I hate hearing those statements. Exactly. Like, I'm sorry, I, I just, even when I sit, it's it's very, I, I get very unpopular real fast. Uh -huh. Because I'm like, I'm sorry, I just don't believe in that. Uh -huh. So, just to share a little personal experience, I was trying to get into a situation to help a friend out and stuff like that. Yeah. But I quickly, after like, you know, we had gone through it, you know, I'd agreed to do certain things. But after a while, I realized that this was not going to serve the goals that I had set for myself and my kids. So I had to unfortunately renege on that agreement. Mm -hmm. But I did it because I understood that it's better for me to be able to stand in the light of my truth. Yes, maybe I didn't realize the truth yesterday, but I realized it today. But I can be honest and upfront about it. Of course. That this is what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you speak about what you desire based on some people's unrealistic expectations, because people honestly believe that it's not possible for you to be in a successful relationship. Of course. Be successful, mm -hmm. have like one sub one my friend said, yes. pass that money. Of course. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, it's, it's yes, possible. Yes, it's very possible. It's extremely mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. Because why would you suddenly assume that that is not within reach for you? Exactly. For you to find another human being who can be reasonable enough to build a lot of wealth, yet want to be in a nice, committed relationship. I honestly believe that. Yeah. But yeah. because it's an unpopular opinion, Obviously, it might take a while for me to maneuver myself to get in that, mm -hmm. but it's a belief system that I have given myself the opportunity to think about. Yes. So when you say things like, oh, well, I just believe that there's still amazing good men out there. Absolutely. And then you hear something, oh, no, the toy is alive. Men are, men are dogs, forget that thing. It doesn't matter how good they are, even the pastors, they will all find, I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> It, I'm sorry, like, I am I the only, I'm, I'm yeah. not the only one, yeah. but am I just crazy for thinking that way? No, you're not. And, and, you know, it goes to the fact that, you know, women come into relationships with something to prove already because of past experiences. Uh -huh. So, um, you hear a woman say, I am not going to take crap from any man because of her hurt, right? So, she comes into this new relationship, great guy, you know, self-sufficient. He wants to love you. That's all he wants to do. But you're making it hard for him because you're like, I'm not going to take crap from any guy. So it makes you treat him a certain way, even before he does something wrong. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? there, there on so, that. so he's like, hey, there on that. I don't know whose crime I'm paying for, but I'm not him. Okay? Sure. Relax. Mm -hmm. I'm in a relationship with you. You don't have to be tense all the time. You don't have to be masculine all the time. But it's so you know? hard to do though. I guess like you always say in your videos that I've watched so many of, yeah. you have to fully heal yourself. And you know how you understand that you're still going through all the traumas of the past is when that mindset comes up. The, the moment you find something good, the moment you're in a situation yeah. where everybody seems to think, oh my God, this is amazing. But you still kind of be picking, sabotaging, and yourself. sabotaging yourself and just being ex excessively difficult, you know? Yeah. So I think, you know, in all of this situation, I just, my heart is to say that, you know what, men, I hear you. I see you. And I know that there's so many other women just like me who hear and see you as well. And we stand with you, 
if you're going through abuse of any kind, any kind, please, <laughs> please find someone to talk to. Find help. Because society is sorely lacking in amazing men. Yeah, or send Dr. Oyin an email. Come on. Yes, you can. Yeah, yes, you email. honestly can. Because yeah. I get a lot of messages like that. And we are able to connect you to community resources. We talk about counseling. We talk about just help. Yeah. That resources, financial as well. Yeah. If you're stuck in a situation, you need to get out. There's so many things that we can connect you. We have all of the other advocates who are you know, working in unison with us that we can say, here we have someone and this is what they need. And the best part about this program is it's all confidential. Of course. You know, your confidence is kept, your identity is kept, you know, you are, your privacy is protected. So you have absolutely nothing to lose but to gain your freedom. So please, take this episode, you know, that's why I have my brother here just really say all of the things that I, I was trying to understand from a man's perspective when it comes to abuse and how this kind of triggers and goes around and this cycle is continuing. So this month of October 2021, as we advocate for families and youth and men and women to live beyond domestic violence, join us, yes. help us, support us, spread the message. And if you're wondering which organization to support, we have the Honey Drops Foundation that is doing amazing work. So the reality of the Honey Drops Foundation is the fact that we work in a very unique way. Okay. We provide education, we provide resources, we provide connected resources within the community, and we partner with the government as well, namely the city of Dallas. Okay. We are part of the Domestic Violence Task Force, so we help wow. spread real-time information. Like during the pandemic when there was a lockdown, Every update that was coming forth and was sent to all the advocates and the community partners, we would get that and spread it within our circle of influence. That meant it was going out in real time from us yeah. to our mailing list. Some, some of it went out on WhatsApp and just whatever means that we were able to provide help and support and just be the voice that people could count on. So that's what we do. So if you want to support, go to the website, honeyjobsfoundation.org. Donate because definitely it still takes a lot of funds and resources to run the programs that we run. And definitely we want you to be part of our movement as well. 2022 Men Against the Abuse Fashion Show. So can I count on you? Gonna be on the wrong way? Ha! You know me. Yeah. <laughs> See how I roped him into Like, there's no getting out of me, but I just roped him. But that's, Smart. <laughs> but that's, that's it. But really, that's what we do. You know, yeah. with that fashion show, it's really just a time when families can come together. We use fashion. We use of entertainment course. to spread a positive message about awesome. men. Awesome. Awesome. And, and you know, for me, finally, uh, what I'll say is, guys, don't let anyone tell you that your emotions are not valid. If you have emotions, you have feelings about things, talk about them. Mm -hmm. You know, we have that uh, mindset that it's okay for you to express how you feel. It's really okay. All right, guys, that's it from us. Until next time. Until next time, it's Toby. And Dr. LJ, boom, bye. <laughs>